Hello and welcome to Why Not? It's the show where we put out your voices. Yes, but there are some voices which feel that they've gone unheard for way too long in these corridors of power. Yes, so on the show today, we focus on the Kashmiri youth. That and much more up ahead. Young Kashmiris on what they see as a resolution to the problems in the state. How long will you, uh, you know, label people as, you know, educational terrorists? We don't want our children to live in terror. And we visit a real life people to see how close the film is to reality. It's been more than three months, but there seems to be no end to the violence in the valley. So where do the solutions lie? Former Jammu and Kashmir Chief Minister and National Conference Chief Farooq Abdullah recently made an emotional appeal. But do these passionate speeches mean anything to the Kashmiri youth? Reena Bhardwaj got us some voices. It's a desperate cry of a person who's confused his torn. How long will you label people as educational terrorists? Kashmir is a paradise that has become hell. Kashmir me jin privaro ne apne jigar ke tukdo ko khoya hai, unke dukh ka ehsas mujhe puri tarah se hai. Sixty-three young Kashmiris have died in stone pelting protests across the valley in as many days. The youth taking to streets despite curfews. And calls for calm, even from separatists. The problem with Indians is that they are ultra-nationalists, and that the love for nation somewhere is makes them blind to understand what is going on in Kashmir. June 11. The death of young Tofil Mattu once again sparked off anger in the valley with a desperate cry for Azadi. That is now resounding in the capital as well. Almost every Kashmiri family here has a Tofil who's lost his life to the conflict. Like Sabah, who prays for her 16-year-old cousin, Junaid. He went trekking uh, with a couple of his friends. For two days, we did not hear anything about them. And finally, what we came to know is that uh, CRPF had uh, got hold of them. They had killed them. They had chopped off their fingers, their ears, and they had put their bodies in such a terrible state. And the only thing uh, they said was that these are terrorists who were crossing over from Pakistan and we caught them on the border. And it's this anger that drives Sabah to the young Kashmiris' protests in Delhi. <laughs> Tempering the fury at Jantar Mantar with reason is Farooq. There's nothing strikingly different about Farooq Fahim an assistant professor of social sciences at the Delhi University. But that's until you chat with this 31-year-old about what it means to be Indian. I remember, you know, uh, we were never comfortable in saying that we are Indians. I mean, as, as children, we, we never knew what is 15 of us, what is... I mean, we always heard that, you know, there is something unfinished in our lives, and that is the dispute of Kashmir. We, our status has not been decided yet. This is how, you know, it carries from one generation to another. In fact, I, I remember, you know, when, when we, in 90s, when it all started, so, say, in streets of Kashmir, if somebody was killed, was shot dead by army, by, by armed forces, so within, uh, I think, days, you will see a memorial coming up with the name of the person who was shot dead, his age, his or her age, with a water tap, you know, it was also symbolic of what are we sacrificing and why are we sacrificing and where we are moving actually. Farooq says in the 90s it may have been the gun, but today stone pelting has more effectively brought political and media attention to the unrest. As the arrest of more than 500 youths and slapping of public safety act on many had made a very little impact on the street clashes. <laughs> 